Now, our next guest, as the Member of Parliament for Kingston upon Hull, was once known as the Mouth of the Humber. Uh, but he's now the highly respected Deputy Leader of the Super Smooth Labour Party. Please welcome John Prescott, MP. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. There you go. Okay, excellent. Well now. <laughs> Is that longer than yours? <laughs> was what longer was than that longer? <laughs> 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 oh, all right. I know you've acted again. No, no. <laughs> no, well, that's true. You were once known as the mouth of the Humber, but that's all behind you now, isn't it? Because you're. Uh... <laughs> 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 yes, keep going. <laughs> because you're, now, you're no longer the outsider. You're, you're central to Labour's thrust for power or go for growth or whatever you're going for. <laughs> the establishment. Yeah, yes. Well, you have very... a big office now. Oh, yes, I'm sure. But now, the, le <laughs> the leader we're all familiar with now is uh, Tony Blair because he's, you know, he's good on television, very personable, charming sort of person. You have dinner with him? I, well, frequently, frequently. And uh, you lawyers stick more together. often than you, apparently. But, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but then you balance, you balance that, don't you? Because you're the sort of uh, one of the last remaining authentic voices of, of the, maybe the old fashioned Labour Party. Is that right. right? Traditional values in a modern setting. All oh, right. That's and, my soundbite. And I was slogans. <laughs> Well, I wonder if you could help help us, because uh, this week, uh, although there's been a lot of news about you, also Gordon Brown has hit the headlines, another leading light. <laughs> now, I, as you, I'm sure you know what I'm You're asking. You're going to quote Grace. This, like... <laughs> now, I want you to translate this into English, because Gordon Brown, the shadow chancellor, has said that he's been stressing the growing importance of post-neoclassical endogenous growth theory and the symbiotic relationship between growth and investment in people and infrastructure. Now, what's that in English? <laughs> Me explain something in yes. English. Yes. <laughs> well, people get at you for sometimes your speeches are yes. incomprehensible, but it's nothing compared to that, is it? So could you do the, the incomprehensible yes, about, explained by inexplicable? Yes. Or? It just simply means that we wish to manage the economy much better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the problem. Can you give us some... You know, give it, I know you don't like hypothetical questions, but in the unlikely event of you actually being elected into power... <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what would you do that was... I think we're winning in Islington, aren't we? <laughs> We always win in Islington. Yeah, we're losing the yeah. else in the south. <laughs> yeah, no, it's dreadful, isn't it? But uh, <laughs> normally, normally at this stage of a parliament, we have the. Do you vote for us, though? Please. You asked me the last time yes, you came. I'm asking I'm not, you again. I, I didn't I, get an I, answer last time. Of course, I time. don't answer a question like that. That's a, it's a disgraceful question to answer. To ask. <laughs> you just can't do it. You wouldn't do that to Jeremy Paxman. He'd have you for lunch. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't even get on University Challenge asking a question like that. Are you going to answer? Of course, I'm not going to answer. You, you're not allowed to ask that question. Why not? Because next week I'll have some Conservative on and he'll be asking a question. I, I can't lie to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's... That's... Li no, lying no, is no, very no. much your job, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now, what I could do, though, because it's open to everybody, is I could go to, to uh, Blackpool, isn't it, for the conference, and I could have dinner, uh, the Labour Party dinner, £350, you hear a speech by Tony Blair, and dinner with you. Mm. So what do you do for the £350? Is it uh, <laughs> drawn cocktails off the nipples, or what are we doing? <laughs> They're willing to pay it, and yeah. we're willing to speak to them. That's all it's about, and they give money to the Labour Party. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yes. Why not? Well, I, I, it's, it's one way of doing it, but uh, the serious question I was trying to get to is that what, what is it that, uh, that you're, that's on offer from the Labour Party that, that somebody might want to vote for that's different from the Conservative Party? You're not going to renationalise anything, so what's the... Well, what's we believe what? in public ownership. I yes. Mean, uh, we think the public railways... Ownership what? Public ownership what? Pubs? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, they used to be owned in some yes, cases, the yeah. pubs, but um, we think a railway system properly financed in which the taxpayer has to pay a lot of money to yeah. it because it yeah. can't be financed simply out of the fares. You yeah. want people to use the railway system. That can be publicly owned. We believe in a public health service. I mean, yes. these are things provided by the community for the community. But what about all the things that have been privatised, like British Telecom, British Airways, water, electricity, gas, all those things? Are they going to be uh, brought back into public ownership? Or? Well, we're a party that doesn't confiscate. We'd have to conf uh, give compensation, and that's right. very, very expensive. So I think if you've got so billions... is that a no, then? Well, yes, it is. If you've yeah. got billions of pounds available, I'd sooner use it to get people back to work yeah. than simply taking the ownership. Yeah. Right. But let, yeah. let, let yeah. me just tell you something else. Yeah. I, I come from Hull, where the local authority owns the telephone. It provides a cheaper, more efficient service than the present private one, so ownership isn't the essential issue no. about the uh, means of production. So you think the borough of Hull should take over the entire telephone system? <laughs> uh, but, uh, but have you been to Hull? I have been to Hull once, yes. It and you shut. used our telephone? Uh, <laughs> 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 no, it's a, it's no, a great place, Hull. It's yeah. a great place. Yes. 
So do you think there's a chance of Labour finally winning an election uh, next time round, given things seem to be sort of recovering now, don't they? The, uh, the last election, things were really bad for, the, for, the, for the, the government, and they still managed to get back in. Yes, and we've lost it each time in the last week. We don't intend to make that same mistake this time. Yeah. You, you just lose it in that one week when the election's no, on. And the, <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the crucial time, isn't it? Then? Maybe it's thir you're bad on Thursdays. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps so, but we're not going to make the same mistake. You can be sure about that. Yes, well, I think Roy Hattersley said much the same thing when he was on as deputy leader, saying uh, uh, you're going to win, and uh, didn't do much for him. Well, do you feel better if I'm going to say we're going to lose? I'm going to lose <laughs> in the last week again. <laughs> well, at least be surprising and interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> but then you'd accuse me of lying. Uh, well, Don't you, you say politicians lie? Um, I think I'd get away with it without being disbelieved, <laughs> couldn't I? <laughs> No, now, just suppose you didn't win, win. and I know, you know, I know you perhaps don't want to think about this, but I, I, is there something you'd like to do outside politics, some other um, project? Yeah, you, your job seems you know, easy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, it's a... <laughs> I tell you what, but it's an awful lot more than what I'm getting as well. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so. What do you, £350 dinners? You can soon make my salary. <laughs> I don't get the money. You, you can make my salary on takeaways. <laughs> now, the, now, what about sort of policies generally, for, as far as the Labour Party is concerned? Uh, I know you were... You, policies? You, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to use a dirty word, but uh, well, you've had an awkward few months, haven't you, about the rail strike, because you are you're sponsored of the RMT uh, union, aren't you? I didn't find that particularly awkward. I think that deal could have been settled, and we tried to make that point. The government particularly wanted to make a lot of political capital out of it. Yeah. And really, the problem for the railways, whether it's publicly owned or privately owned, is that you've got to find more money for it. And I developed some new ideas, not from the taxpayer, but perhaps from where you can borrow privately, lease trains, all those kind of things that we can modernise our railway system. Uh, were you disappointed with Tony Blair for not taking a stand in favour of the... Uh, no, I think you've got signal. to take into account that a lot of pressures of government trying to force you into positions. If they politically engineered the strike, you've got to ask yourselves why, and they just want to make an issue about trade unions as if they're the villain of the police, despite the fact they've been in for 15 years, and we found that the economy has completely collapsed under them. So you're saying the government politically engineered that strike for oh, political no gain? So they mean, they wanted, they're happy the to have the railways closed down every couple of days for, yes. for three months in order to Hope get... Hope to take it to the conference yeah. and get some kind of, you know, we're fighting the devil within or the yeah. enemy within us. So like three before. months ago they said, let's have a rail strike organised, let's not give them their money. And then, so we'll have something to talk about at the Conservative conference. No, I think if you put it this way, that um, they could have settled this matter within, the, within their own terms, and they didn't. Eventually they did, so why did we have the dispute? Well, I don't know. You, you obviously... Well, you're uh, asking me, and I, I'm just saying to you that they could have been I was trying to clarify your answer. You appeared to say there, which I thought was an, a, a rather a bold assertion, that the government deliberately organised a rail strike so that they could say we've cleared it up in time for the Conservative Well, Conference. I say engineered the strike. In fact, they had to agree whether they would accept that 5% or not. Yeah. Uh, the management and the unions were prepared to deal on that. Uh, the government stopped it. The government stopped it. You must ask yourself why. Yeah. Because at the same time, they agreed with the bank workers to get exactly the same under the same conditions, but they allowed that deal through. Now, why didn't they then pr allow the rare women to settle and let the managers and the unions come to an agreement? So is, is, the, agreement, is the agreement they've now got... Is, is the agreement they've now got one you think they could have had, everybody could have had three months ago? Oh, there's no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. But uh, do you find yourself uh, automatically put on the side of the worker because that union sponsors you? You have to take their side. No, I, um, I don't it think... It's an embarrassing position if you no. think they were wrong. You'd... Well, I'm not sponsored by every union, so I wouldn't have yeah. that difficulty. But you're sponsored by that alliance. union, though, aren't you? Yes, RMT. I am, but I mean... I come from the trade unions. I was a worker for 10 years. Uh, yeah. I do a job now which is better than working. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah. basically, I don't find an identity for that. And if I find the government's organising a situation to put workers down in this sense, I think I should say that. And I have some sympathy with our view, and in this case, I think the issue was right, and it's my job as a politician to put that case oh. to the people. OK, well, I've got to go and save some money so I can afford to eat with you next week. £350. <laughs> ah. pounds. Get that prawn cocktail ready. Thank you very much. John, John Prescott, MP. OK. <laughs> Okay, we'll take a break now. See you after that. Bye.